Hey, Google, turn on the office lights. Over the winter, I converted a section of my basement into a new office studio filming area. I decided to do this because my previous office was in a small spare bedroom. Things were getting a little cramped, especially as I started to take this channel a little bit more seriously. I started getting more filming gear, some big lights, camera stuff. It was just getting kind of hectic. There was stuff everywhere. And for someone like me with ADHD, when there's just like stuff in the wrong spot, and I'm trying to focus on something and there's just all these things distracting me, it is a nightmare. I ended up just spending a ton of time just like rearranging things and like when I had to switch to filming an overhead drawing shot to like a talking shot, I'd have to just totally change everything because there was no room to have things just like set up and just like moved aside. So my house has a large unfinished, well partially finished now, basement that has like high enough ceilings and it's also a walkout so there's like windows and a door and that's where we are now so let's check it out. So when you first walk into the space over to the left is like my shipping area and like cutting spot so if I have to like cut prints or ship orders that all happens right here. Got some cutting boards on here. This is actually a desktop just sort of screwed into one of those Ikea cube things. So there's storage below. It's kind of a shit show right now. Doesn't look very nice, but it gets mostly hidden by how far the desk comes over the side. Then I've just got like a simple little scale here. I have this document tray that I put things that I don't want to look at, business type stuff. And then up here, I got a little slide drawer, assorted pens. Folding bone, Sharpie. And then I got a drawer here with some swag. Got these little skull pins, some really old donut pins, these enamel pins. So that's the shipping zone. So this is my main desk setup. It's a little bit of a mess because of the cord situation, but I've got so frustrated with like wireless mice and keyboards just like not connecting and just being annoying that I went hardwired for this setup. Just works better. I don't have to worry about batteries dying at like the worst possible time. For my mouse, you people who have seen, you people, it's kind of rude. Those of you who have seen one of my earliest videos, which is a, just a very poorly filmed office setup video in my old office, may recognize my handshake mouse. This is the same one I used to have, though it's wired now. This is by Anchor. So my previous Anchor mouse that I had for many, many years ended up just dying one day. I don't know what happened. I think it was just old age, nothing to get concerned about. But I ended up replacing it with this Microsoft Bluetooth mouse that just had some good reviews online and looked pretty attractive. Let me uh, grab it for you. It's this, uh, this little jobber right here. It's a nice attractive profile. I switched over to a handshake mouse back in my graphic design days because I was getting carpal tunnel. And I thought because I didn't use a mouse as much as I used to, it wouldn't be a concern anymore. After using this, maybe because I was spending more time on a computer editing videos, that carpal tunnel came back with a vengeance. Said goodbye to that mouse. Went back to the trusty handshake mouse. Take some of that wrist pressure off. And then I got this new fancy keyboard that just looks cool. It's like a mechanical keyboard. I never had one of these before, but my trusty Matthias keyboard that I had forever, uh, one of the keys fell off and it just stopped working. I had it for, I don't know, probably 10 years. So new keyboard new mouse sitting on top of this mouse pad or desk mat, more of a desk mat, it's not really a mouse pad, that has my pattern on it that I ordered from my own Society6 shop. I don't get that many sales on there. I think maybe because I don't talk about it that much, but there was a point in my career where I was getting a substantial amount of money from Society6 every month from people ordering things from me. I don't know if it's Society6 in particular, or maybe it's me, but I don't know. I think I got $8 from them this month. So I've got these Edifier speakers that I spent way too much time obsessing over speakers for some reason. I'm not that kind of person, but I wanted some nice desk speakers. I decided to get these. They're moderately priced, but nowhere near as expensive as some of the ones I looked at. And I think they sound fantastic. I thought I was going to want like an extra subwoofer from kicking some hard beats, but these pump pretty good. I'm very happy with them. So what else do I have on my desk? I got this arm, this iPad arm, the uh, cuckoo. Cuckoo? 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 I can't remember the name right now. Kuksu. Kuksi? Kushi. Kushi. Listen, I did a whole video about it. Kuksi? Is that how you say it? Kuksi? I use it to mount my iPad that I use as an external display 
with my other big display. The cool thing about this is when I need to like draw something in Photoshop, it's already hooked up to my computer. So I just pop it down and do a little bit of drawing and then push it back up. And it's a nice size for a little extra screen real estate. If I'm like working on something over here, I can have like my files over here or can have a video playing if I need some entertainment. My main display is an LG, I think it's a 32 inch. It's like the Ergo one. The cool thing about this is it kind of uh, goes up and down and it spins around, very flexible, kind of nice, good quality. It's 4K, used to be the Apple when Apple worked with LG to do a display, so that's why I sort of trusted it. Also mounts onto the desk. Underneath the monitor, you'll see this little clock here. I have horrendous time blindness as someone with ADHD. So the more clocks I can have around me, the less I'll be surprised about what time it is because I just lose track of time constantly. So this was just one that I found on Amazon. The one thing I'm not crazy about is it's reflective and in all the pictures on Amazon, it just looked like it was gloss black and that was that's what I wanted but it's like a mirror finish. So I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that, but it's helping me know what time it is. I also have this other thing, the time timer, and this is just a, a nice device for people like me who have ADHD and they need to sort of use timers to like work on things. So I don't hyper-focus on one thing and just spend the whole day doing that. I can just set like an hour, fills up red, and then it slowly goes back to zero. And as it goes back, the red disappears. The thing I like about this is it doesn't make any noise. It's not flashing. Like even just this clock over here with that, like why do those dots have to flash? Like I'm seeing it in the corner of my eye all the time. It drives me crazy, I hate that. But this, no sound, and then it just goes back and the red is like a nice visual reminder. I will say that if it's like down here or off to the side, sometimes I miss it and then I don't notice when it ends. You can put a sound on, but when there's a sound, I get like stressed out thinking about when it's gonna go off or something and it's just gonna be obnoxious. I have another timer on the desk too. This one I was really excited about. I saw it in some other video. I forget which video it was, but this is just a little cube and it has different time amounts on each side. And you can get these in like different configurations, but I thought this was a good one. So it's got like 10 minute, 30 minute, 50 minute, 60 minute. And all you do to use this is you just choose the amount of time you want and you just put it like that. And then it just starts going. And then a little alarm goes off when that 60 minutes is up. It's not a scary alarm. It's just something that's like, oh, there's the alarm again. So I, I love that all you have to do is just place it down like that. The thing that drives me crazy is this flashing light. Why does that need to happen? I guess maybe like you might not know if it's working. I need to like, cause even if you put something over it, you can still see it like glowing through the sides cause it's sort of translucent. I think I'm gonna try taking it apart, do a little mod action and see if I can like remove the light in there. I feel like maybe I could get inside of it because if it wasn't for that, I would really like this thing. And then when the alarm goes off, you just put it back up to like the blank side and then it's and it's over. If you're not someone with ADHD, these two things may have been like, what, what is that, why? Next to this other speaker is the CalDigit 4. So this is a, a Thunderbolt 4 hub that I use with my MacBook Pro in, uh, I believe the term is clamshell mode, where it's just shut. I don't know why we call it clamshell mode, but that's what we do. This thing powers it. So it's just got one Thunderbolt cord that goes into the MacBook Pro and that supplies the MacBook Pro with power. So everything goes into this and then that goes to the MacBook Pro. So there's only one wire going to the MacBook Pro, which is pretty rad. So when I'm gonna take the MacBook Pro with me, I just have to undo that one cord, take it away. And then when I come back, I pop it into its little thing, put that one cord in and it's ready to go hooked up to all this stuff. The other cool thing about it is it has a micro SD card on the front and a regular SD card thing on the front. So I just put my cards in there. It's also got headphone port on the front, some USB C's, USB A, there's all kinds of ports, tons of ports. So if you're a Mac person, you know that you don't get that many ports on your computer. So this thing is super great. It is expensive though. I think it was like 400 something dollars and felt like it was a tough thing to justify, but it's super nice to be able to hook up multiple hard drives. Like I have another solid state drive hooked up to this thing. So it's just like always there. So it gives me extra hard drive space, which has become a huge concern now that I'm making videos every week. Videos make up, take up a lot of uh, hard drive space. I guess I should say what, like what we're, what I'm dealing with here computer wise in case you're one of those people who's like into tech stuff and you want to know that kind of thing. So I am running the 16 inch MacBook Pro from 2021. And I believe it's got a one terabyte uh, solid state drive. Sometimes I say hard drive because that was like a term. I guess what it was for years and years. Like most of my life, they're hard drives. And then some of these are maybe such a solid state drive. I understand the difference between solid state drives. But I still say hard drive because it's like the, the term. It's like, you know, really people who say refrigerator or something for a refrigerator. Sort of the same thing. Or like a band-aid. So I say hard drive. 
I say that because in the last video I got lots of people correcting me in the comments telling me it's actually not a uh, hard drive, it's a solid state drive. And I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. This got a little hostile, I apologize. This is the 12.9 iPad Pro, the M1 from 2021 as well. They both are great, work amazing, no issues there. So as I talked about in one of my previous videos, I've been going through a lot of pain from the way I draw and like working in the same position all the time. So I've been trying to think of different ways to switch things up and right in the midst of all this thought, FlexiSpot reached out to me to test out one of their standing desks. And I was pretty excited about that because my previous desk was also supposedly a standing desk. It was the Husky workbench thing, which I'll talk about more in a minute. And when it was cranked all the way up, it didn't really work as a standing desk for me because I'm kind of tall. Um, I'm not freakishly tall, I'm 6'2", but that's tall enough that when it was all the way up, it just, I was sort of like hunched over using it. So I was a little bit worried that maybe that's just how high standing desks went and like you had to get something custom if you were above average height. But I am happy to say that this FlexiSpot desk goes so high, it's sort of crazy. I'll show you an example of that in a little while. I ended up buying the Husky Workbench because I wanted something that was like super sturdy. In my old office, I didn't have a lot of room, so I had to mount everything to my desk, like the cameras and stuff like that. And when I'd be drawing on my previous desk, it would like shake a little bit. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get a workbench style desk and that thing is not gonna wobble. It still wobbles a little bit. That Husky desk is a workbench and this FlexiSpot desk is just a desk and it is easily as sturdy as the Husky desk, which is so, so heavy. This one's pretty heavy, but like a good heavy, like a heavy duty desk. When I wanted to raise up or lower the other one, I need a little crank arm, like I'm in the 1800s. I was like, <laughs> this one, I got buttons. We got memory buttons. So I have the first one set to like my normal down position, which it didn't do anything because it's already right there. And then number two is my standing position. It goes right up to where I want. And it's nice and smooth going up. I can leave my coffee on there. I actually use this standing on a somewhat regular basis now, which is pretty cool because I didn't think I would actually do that. Let me go ahead and show you the comparison with the Husky desk. So this is my old Husky desk, which is currently my iPad drawing desk, which is actually good for because I can still raise it up and lower it a little bit. So let's, let's get this into standing mode. I guess the good thing is you get a little exercise. We'll see how high this bad boy will go. So this is maxed out, it's too short for me. Let's see uh, how high this thing can go. That's like a split difference. Just say, hey, let me just move this uh, Husky desk out of here. Later desk. It's ridiculous. As I've been making more and more videos, one of the things I've struggled with the most is getting good quality overhead shots while I'm drawing on the iPad. And I watched a ton and ton of tutorials on how to get good overhead shots. And so many of them are geared towards like open uh, box opening videos or open boxing videos, boxing, package opening videos. What are those videos called? There's all kinds of videos about those, but those are great for showing you how to like mount a camera overhead for the most part. But what they don't address are things that are unique to drawing on an iPad, which is dealing with like reflection, because a lot of these videos tell you to just light directly overhead. And when you do that on an iPad, you get a ton of glare. I had to figure out different ways to try different ways to light the screen without getting reflection and also not having my hands in like a weird dark shadow because that looks weird too. The other issue I ran into is that most of these setups require you mounting like an arm to your desk to film down onto that desk. What I ran into while I was drawing on the iPad is that I would like lean on the desk a little bit drawing and the it would wobble a little bit. And then the, camera, the video footage would be wobbly. Nobody wants to get seasick while they're watching a drawing video. So I may do for a while just trying to like be very careful as I was drawing, but that's not ideal. Can't be worrying about how I'm leaning while I'm drawing something. So anyway, getting these overhead shots set up in my old office took so much time where I was just like, constantly messing with lights and like moving the camera, trying to get the camera level, just wasted a ton, a ton of time. So I knew that when I had this new office, one of the first things I was gonna do was set up an additional workspace 
that was just for filming the iPad and it was all set up and ready to go. So this here is my current setup. I think I'm getting pretty decent shots. I still need to tweak a few things here and there, but I'm pretty happy with it. But even in just the short time I've been in this office, I went through a lot of different iterations, some a bit more ridiculous than others. But you can see remnants on the wall and on the ceiling from different things that I attempted. But let me show you what I have that's working pretty well for me. Okay, so this is what we got going on here. I'm using the same monitor mount that I saw recommended in a bunch of different videos on how to make like a DIY overhead rig. I mounted this to a shelf instead of my desk. So the shelf wasn't very sturdy. If you look closely, you'll see that I have like a, a random little bracket drilled to support it even more. So now that this is mount mounted on a shelf, I don't have to worry about leaning on the desk too much and shaking it. If we look towards the end of the arm, you can see where I took off the mount, the visa mount that would connect to a monitor. And then I just put a bolt through that was the same size as the hole in this like, um, pivoting tripod head and that's how I attach the camera. So I just attach the pivoting ball head, I think that's what it's called, to the arm and then the camera onto that. These monitor arms also have really nice cable management things built into them. So I'm able to run the USB-C cord to a plug in the wall so that the camera is always being powered and I don't have to worry about batteries. Which reminds me, I got this really cool plug on Amazon that has additional outlets, but it also has a USB-C and USB-A outlet in it. So I just plug that directly into this new outlet thing and it's powering my camera. And I can easily just pivot this ball head if I wanna shoot like a, a vertical video. And since I have the new standing desk for my main desk, I have a height adjustable desk for the iPad as well. So this is really helpful if I wanna raise or lower the iPad for different view angles. So for lighting, I use this giant softbox thing because Apparently to get the least amount of glare and the softest light, you need the biggest diffusion you can get. I got this one by Godox. And then I just have it bouncing the light off of a piece of foam board, which is just leaning on a random arm that I have attached to a previous attempt at a mounting system. But as you can see, the table is well lit, but there's no glare on the iPad itself. I also wanted to have like a sitting hangout area if people were here or if I needed a break or if my kid comes down here and he needs a spot to eat his Cheerios and watch some cartoons. I got this couch from, I think Wayfair. It's relatively comfortable. It's comfortable enough for how much it gets used. It's pretty cheap. It's got some USB charging ports on it, which is kind of cool, nice feature. And then I uh, spiced it up with some Govi strip lights to get a little, little vibe, a little 90s tuner car underglow style if you catch my drift. And also I got some fake plants over here to hide the sump pump because again this is a basement and fake plants because it's uh, dark down here and I can barely keep myself alive. I don't know how you're expecting me to like take care of plants. Do you want me to water them? Do you want me to move them around so they get light? Listen I can't. I can't I can't do the bare minimum for myself. I'm not raising plants and keeping them alive and you got to sing to them i think I, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with plants that i'm not capable of doing so i'm sorry they're fake they look kind of nice though right there's also this neon sign that i'm really excited about that i had made from one of my designs and the only issue is i can't seem to get good footage of it because no matter what i do i cannot get it to not flicker if it's not at 100 percent brightness and at 100 percent brightness it just gets blown out and i've tried different shutter speeds different different frames per second it just it just flickers so i don't know they'll like it though then i also have a record player hooked up to some speakers that i have spread out around the room sounds really good i just uh never make the time to actually sit and listen to them but i love records so they're down here and you know maybe someday i will force myself to just enjoy them maybe i'll listen to a record right now you want to listen to a record all right i can only play for like four seconds of it though because i might get copyright strikes on my channel and we can't have that So on this back wall, I set up some really wide shelves that I could just put lots of cool stuff on to use as like a fun, interesting, colorful backdrop to offset the moody black walls. So let me turn this camera around and show you some of this stuff because all this uh, sweet bokeh I got with this lens is not letting you see the cool stuff on my shelf. Like this Thundercat, this Lego packaging I worked on, got an eyeball, lunchbox, some more toys, lots of weird toys, a robot. There's some books, good books, recommend all those. Got this little toy, we got Danzig, motorcycle tank, just a ton of stuff that friends made and other stuff that I've collected. This print by Greg Kletzel, this print by Krista Perry, more books, 
recommend those, except for mine. The seat I worked on for GT, the Hulk, an idol's print, Danzig. I saw this pegboard on Becky and Chris's YouTube channel while looking for office inspiration and immediately wanted one. This one came from my Ikea. It's basically a charging station and holds random filming stuff, tools, and cords. In addition to all that, the space is also decorated with stuff that I like, including this giant C that I found at an antique fair that used to be part of a bigger sign. I don't really know what it said, but something involving a C. I've got lots of art from friends and other stuff I've collected over the years. Basically just stuff to keep me inspired. If you're interested in any of the stuff in this video, I will make sure that I put a link in the description to as much as I can. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments what you think about my new space.